Now let's talk about acids, bases, and pH. And we'll start by talking about acids and bases. Coffee, incidentally, uh, is a, an acidic solution that has weak acids in it. Now, uh, one definition of an acid is a substance that yields an excess of hydrogen ions, which are H+, and when dissolved in water means that those are H plus aqueous. So everything we're going to talk about for acids and bases will be in water. Water is the solvent. Um, and so here's our first definition of an acid. As you get to more advanced classes in chemistry, you will see increasingly broad or, yes, broad definitions of acids and bases. As examples, we have a number of acids right here. Uh, HCl are favorite, my favorite strong acid, and as a strong acid, it breaks up 100% into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Not that we care about the chloride ions right now. For sulfuric acid, also a strong acid, it breaks up 100% into ions as well. And here we want to be careful to do it one at a time. H2SO4, sulfuric acid, is a strong acid. It creates 100% hydrogen ions and 100% bisulfate or hydrogen sulfate ions. And we take off one H+. Now, HSO4 minus, HSO4 minus the hydrogen sulfate ion is a weak acid. We know it's a weak acid um, for a couple with a couple pieces of information. One is it's not on our list of seven strong acids, <clears throat> and it has an H in the front. H is in the front or COOH is in the back, mean that it's a weak acid. And so I'm gonna put less than 5% here because all weak acids break up into ions less than 5%. Uh, and again, that's all we have to know for the weak acids. Some of them, they have varying levels, and the actual percents is, again, something that we save for uh, more advanced chemistry courses. But it's a weak acid. It does create less than 5% H pluses. And if we've taken another H plus away, we're left with the sulfate ion as the other product. Here, COOH. Um, is uh, again it's a weak acid less than five percent h pluses and this time the h plus comes off the uh, back end and we are left with the acetate ion right there so these are uh, showing how we're all creating h plus and it just says an excess here it just has to create some and we see that strong acids and weak acids create different amounts. Not all, all hydrogens are acidic hydrogens, so meaning an, an acidic hydrogen uh, is an acid. So acidic hydrogens, um, meaning they make, or so create H pluses, create hydrogen ions, HCl, strong acid, sure. This H right here is what's called an acidic hydrogen. And I'll just write acidic H plus, acidic hydrogen. Here we see that um, the H is in the front again, acidic. But it's a little trickier because the first H plus is strong, the second H plus is weak. Here, we have an H that is acidic because we see the COOH group. Here, well, this is tricky because this compounds with the name ethanol and this compounds with the name acetic acid look very similar. So this is why we have to know our OH groups or specifically know to look for COOH groups. This is a weak acid. 
This is not a weak acid. This is an alcohol. Uh, but what we need to know now is this is not a weak acid. That's why I've emphasized this COOH group so much. Just as another example, we'll throw in carbonic acid. We recognize this is an acid because it's got H's in the front. Because there are two ways to know acids. Acids, excuse me. H's in the front or COOH's in the back. Uh, and then just generally, hydrogen's bonded to O's, S's, and halogens are acidic, and we see examples of that, although we also see a counterexample, no acidic H's. Um, that's why we write generally. And uh, you'll note that for the H's um, that are attached to the carbons, so are not acidic. They will never be acidic, and we'll talk more about them, but that's a key distinction for right now. Okay, so it gets more complicated. The hydrogen ions produced by the, uh, by the acid are so reactive that they cannot exist in water. Uh, and so now let's pretend that I'm a hydrogen atom. Um, and as a hydrogen atom, let's do this. A hydrogen atom is one proton and one electron. Okay, no neutrons in uh, a, a typical hydrogen atom. And then if we have one proton and one electron and we have the electron leave to become H+, then all we're left with is a proton. And H plus, a hydrogen ion, hydrogen ions are protons. And protons are very tiny. Protons are very tiny, very reactive, and they cannot exist in water. Instead, they react with water molecules to produce complex ions, mainly hydronium ion, H3O plus. And so we could write H plus. plus H2O goes to hydronium ion, H3O plus. So hydronium ions exist in water. Uh, they are the main thing that exists in water, not H pluses. Uh, there are also minor amounts of H plus with multiple water molecules. Again, things get complicated. However, in this course, things are simple. And in biology courses, things are simple. They refer to the H plus ion. We will refer to the H plus ion as well throughout this course. So we'll just use H plus. We'll know that things get more complicated, but they don't have to for us. H plus is what is created in water by an acid. So H plus created in water by acids. It is our ambassador of acids. It is what we think of when we think of acids, and it is what we will use to calculate pH. End of story for this course. Um, now, and then this page just serves to say, yes, it gets more complicated, but not for us. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled lecture. Strong acids ionize 100%. There are only seven strong acids. Uh, you should have them memorized by now. Let's do my second favorite strong acid, nitric acid, 100% H pluses. And nitrate ions. Now, um, we mention this again because if you have a 1.00 molar solution of nitric acid, at least that's what the bottle says, we know that it is broken up 100% into hydrogen ions and nitrate ions. And so this becomes, or is, let's say is, because it's already, we're looking at the bottle, say, is 1.00 molar 
hydrogen ions and 1.00 molar nitrate ions, okay? There are no whole molecules in there. It is broken up 100%, and so we'll say, this is what the bottle says, but this is what's really in there, okay? And this is gonna be important because for strong acids, whatever the bottle says or whatever we're given in the problem, we're going to be able to get the concentration of H plus, our acid, and from that, eventually, we're gonna be able to get pH. So you will be able to do pH calculations for strong acid solutions in this class. Weak acids ionize less than 5%. And depends on what the weak acid is. So what we will say for this is, uh, yes, it's acidic. Yes, it's H+. But we will not be able to do calculations of pH for weak acids. At least right now. Um, so let's just focus on dealing with strong acids and then identifying weak acids, knowing that they're acidic, um, but not, being, not doing pH calculations. F, a base, is a substance that yields an excess of hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. And uh, that is a definition that we will use in this course. Strong bases dissociate 100%. My favorite strong base, sodium hydroxide. And we said that for this course, we will consider the group one hydroxides as the only strong bases you need to memorize and know. Sodium hydroxide definitely fits that bill. Break it up 100%. And similarly to strong acids, if you have 0 0.500 molar sodium hydroxide on the bottle, that is really 0 0.500 molar sodium, uh, sodium ions. And 0 0.500 molar hydroxide ions. And for strong bases, we will do pH calculations as well because we know the concentration of hydroxide and we'll be able to get the concentration of hydrogen ions from that. And we don't even mention weak bases. I will just say we don't do any calculations with them either right now. Um, and, uh, but again, most of the focus is on strong, uh, so, Strong acids, strong bases, and then some we'll talk about weak acids as far as identification. Now, uh, acid-base reactions are neutralization reactions. They're a type of double replacement reaction, which we've already talked about double replacement reactions. When you have a acid-base neutralization reaction with a strong acid and a strong base, you could take any strong acid and strong base and we will get the same net ionic equation. Strong acid, so, uh, oh, except for sulfuric acid, which is diprotic. So ignoring that, let's start with HBr. Let's start with uh, potassium hydroxide. Um, now the exact salt will diff be different depending upon which two we have, but in a double replacement reaction, we take the negative ion from one side, pair it with the positive ion from another, we'll get uh, potassium bromide, which will dissolve. Then we get our water um, as our other product. Now, uh, and that will be regardless of which strong acid and strong base we use for this course. The net ionic equation, what's really going on in this reaction no matter which strong acid or strong base we use for this course, excepting sulfuric, will be H plus plus hydroxide goes to H2O liquid. So this is really what's happening when you do an acid-base neutralization. 
and it's for any strong acid except sulfuric and any strong base that we deal with. And so that's why it doesn't matter which specific acid, strong acid or base you use. Now it's a little different. There is a pattern for weak acids and strong bases. That's the other type of reaction we will talk about in this class. Uh, typical one, acetic acid. Sorry, I ran out of space for my aqueous up there. Strong base, let's use potassium hydroxide again. Uh, this time, we will break things up. Uh, we will have, as far as our products go, water and potassium acetate. That is our salt. It is aqueous. And this time, so because the acetic acid breaks up less than 5%, we will bring it down here as a whole molecule. The potassium and the hydroxide break up, leaving us with hydroxide and acetate. So in this process, we're breaking the H away from the acetic acid, the other 95 plus percent, so that's why we write it here, and we're forming water. 